And now it's time for Photo Booth Live Chat with John Young. John Young, your host tonight, and I, this evening I am joined by one of my friends here in the industry. I've got the one and only Dr. Drax. What do you mean, Drax? Hey, how are you, John? It's good to be here with you on PBN TV. Pretty cool. when you've got too many different little aspects exactly and there's one there's i'm seeing something going on behind so there might be some audio issues and the, the audio things behind there and i apologize if you guys are seeing that but it should be clear now it's because i've got Excellent. layer after layer after layer after layer of a video so layer layer peel that onion yeah layer. pretty much about that's layer. what it is Lots so, of layers. so tonight gang what we're going to talk about is we want to talk about um drex is from the uh, photo booth association and part of of the benefit to that involves protecting your business, growing yep. your business and protecting it. And I wanted to uh, give Drax some time tonight to uh, talk a little bit about that because these are two, you know, it doesn't matter which industry we're in. These are two things that we need to be thinking of as responsible business people, not only the the growth and such, but protecting what we've got. So let's let's kind of dig into that, um, whichever okay. angle you want to start, uh, but I want to make sure we hit both the growth side and, um, and, well, and the protection side. The growth side at PBX 2020, I'll be giving a presentation called What's Your Plan, which talks about your business plan, what's your plan for your company? You know, are you just operating a business and hoping it goes somewhere? Do you have a plan for growth? What's your plan for growth? How are you measuring your metrics of growth? And more importantly, what's your plan when you get to some point and you go, I want to retire. So many people in the events business get in and they don't have an exit strategy. Mm -hmm. Their plan for growth never has a window of how I stop. Because let's face it, if you own a photo booth, what you own is some gear. And hopefully when you end, you want to be able to end and sell the gear for some value. And, and you want to have earned a lot of money with it. So you got to basically have a good solid plan for how you grow and how you measure that, that business's growth and success. A lot of photo boothers folk try to focus on corporate activations because they see it as big money. Sure. Well, the problem with it, yes, it can be big money, but here's the real challenge. When you have that, that's a little narrow niche and you're not pitching to the end customer. Activations are almost always pitched to an intermediary that you have to convince because typically they want to be more than just one part of Phoenix or one city. They want to get somebody that'll do all the activations for the state of Texas, preferably. And so you've got to come into it with a different mindset than you have to sell a photo booth to a bar bat mitzvah, to a wedding or to a holiday party. So 
again, that plan, what's your plan, needs to figure out what segments you're looking to identify and address, how you'll address them, and how you will develop a unique selling proposition or a brand value that says why they should hire you versus the companies that are already doing it. So that's, that's kind of the things people need to focus on as they think about building a business. Now, obviously, there's a lot more to get into, you know, CapEx cost, which stands for capital expenditures, mm -hmm. OpEx cost, which is operational expenditures, and you need to know how they figure into your tax plan, how they figure in your business plan, and the appropriate ways you have to view them in your business. OpEx is something you're going to have always, always, always going on. CapEx is your capital. That means buying equipment, buying things that are stationary, that you're going to use it, and buying a computer, buying a printer, buying another camera. That's capital. And at some point, you're going to say, this has been recovered. We've deducted it from taxes. And most importantly, we've earned enough money from using it that we've got back several times what we paid for it. We can now liquidate it and buy some new gear. But if you've got a good business plan, you've got the money already set aside for that new capital acquisition because you have a CapEx uh, total. But in that CapEx is not just what you have already acquired, but it's a line for maintenance and repair of things you have. And then there's a replacement line, which is when the new Uber Cool Roamer comes out or the new Uber Cool Selfie Booth comes out, do I have the money to take from the business and buy it? Or is Uncle John's cabin loaning the business more money? Right. Yeah. Most users, they start a business, they take it out of their wallet. They take it out of their personal money. And I've always maintained if you start a booth company and you buy a bunch of things, first order of business is to pay yourself back. Mm -hmm. So the business is now autonomous. It has, it owns its own property and you've been paid back for what you've, you've done versus what most do, which is, well, I need to book 170 or 200 parties at some price. And at some point, they just wash their hands and feel like they've got back what they spent. But that's never the plan. The plan is to get back what you spent, plus income, plus profit, plus overhead. So those are the kind of things we're going to address uh, not just at my PBX session, but also in ongoing episodes that we hopefully will do here with uh, PBN TV, mm -hmm. where we'll kind of dig into those aspects. And we'll take one part of it, and we'll spend that session on just that one thing. So, so of course, you'll be doing a presentation at uh, Photo Booth Expo. By the way, you can go out to the uh, photobuthexpo.com, and the tickets are available right now for next year's show. I've, there are thousands of people who have already signed up for the show. It's going to be the biggest photo booth expo so far. Uh, it's going to be the biggest events convention. It, yeah, it, in it, 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 it will rival wedding NBA for size. It, you know, the, the numbers of people will be huge. It'll have a massive, massive exhibit hall again. Um, it's going to be an incredible show. If you haven't been to PBX, that's the show to go to. If you can only make one show in a year for your photo booth business, that's the one to be at. Oh, for sure. There's just so much there in training. And there's, there's, um, there, there's, you learn things in a seminar room. There's the gear at a level you haven't seen anywhere else. And then there's the hallway chatter, which sure. any one of the three is going to pay for the trip. But you put them all three together and you have got a great, great, uh, Great it's event. explosive because truly when you go to a convention, all you need is one, one, one good idea. Yep. One thing that better, betters your business over a five-year window, that becomes thousands of dollars of increased revenue just from one thing. Every photo booth expo I've gone to, I've walked away with at least 10, mm -hmm. at least 10 items that would improve my business as a boother. Yeah, for sure. That's uh, a great opportunity for someone who's wanting to either get into the industry or wanting to uh, take it to a new level. It's well, is, Exactly. And that's what the Photo Booth Association does is we help boothers to build and grow their business by giving them these tools we've been talking about and mentoring and coaching them along the way. 
So, so and obviously a- having discounts on products and services that they need in their booth business. Mm-hmm. So that, that was one of the uh, questions uh, because every once in a while people are like, you know, where do I, if I have questions, who can I talk to? Who can I turn to? And that's one of the real benefits of being a member of the association, because when they're a member of the association, if they've got questions, they can contact yourself and, yep. and be, take advantage of your years of experience within in the in, entertainment industry. Well, ex- exactly. Every day I spend about a third of the day mentoring members teaching them, you know, going through the kinds of things we just talked about, Mm -hmm. but mentoring them in the respect of, okay, what's your action item? What do we we feel we've identified as your critical link? So that critical link, we now develop a critical path. What's the way we blow that critical link out of the way, make it successful for you? Well, it's mentoring is a result of not just saying, oh, go do that. Mentoring is go do that. And I'll talk to you next week. Sure. And you report back. It's kind of a return and report. You go out and do it, and then you return and report. And and that's that's one of the values of having it is you have someone that you call the office. Unlike most companies, I'm not there with the idea of how fast can I get you off the phone, but how thoroughly I can quick uh, how thoroughly I can answer your complete question in a manner that's beneficial to you that you leave refreshed and you leave with knowledge that you can put into action. Knowledge and you're, you're excited, motivated to go and make those changes, make those yeah. adjustments and yeah, really grow your business. Uh, let's, let's jump over to the, to the uh, side about protecting our business. Now that's a, certainly an important thing, especially as we have a financial investment, not only in the business with the gear and our time and different things there, but we have our, as we get a little older, we start to have homes and, and different property and things that can be put at risk if you're not doing things correctly. So to protect one's photo booth business, where do they start? First place to start is have a entity, have a business, have a corporation or an LLC. Now with it, you can't just create one and then ignore it. There are rules in your state that govern the, the existence of entities like corporations and LLCs. Mm-hmm. LOCs are a great opportunity, I think, for most people. They're not complicated. They're not overly burdened with reporting and other documents and meetings and such things. But they pr- provide a level of protection if you keep certain rules in place to where suing you personally becomes more difficult. Mm-hmm. And that's called the corporate veil. Yep. You hear it all the time. Sure. They pierce the corporate veil. That happens when someone is commingling their money or they don't, don't have their documents in order, they're not maintaining the proper structure, then it's of little value. But if you do it correctly, it's of great value and it helps you protect your assets. That's, that's level one. Now, this is the most important part, regardless of your sole proprietorship, a partnership, or an LLC. Have liability insurance. Liability insurance as a member of the PBA is $99 for a million dollar policy. That's less than $2 a week. Now, in fact, it's a lot less than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Less than, it's less than a, uh, well. Yeah, just under, just under two. fifty a week. Yeah, yeah, just under, under two a week. So having liability insurance, the first thing that happens when you have liability insurance you need to understand a lot of boothers have the idea, well, I just have a booth. Nothing will happen. I just have a ring roamer. Nothing will happen. Well, the reality is everyone at the party gets involved if somebody gets hurt. Two people get drunk and have a fight. Every vendor at that event is going to get an invitation to court. And it doesn't matter whether you're guilty, liable at all. They're going to sue everyone and they're going to call you and say, we've named you in this lawsuit. Sucks to be you. Mm -hmm. Give us $10,000 and we'll let you out. And you say, forget that. Mm -hmm. I had no responsibility. Why should I give you anything? Yep. I'm not responsible. And that's probably true. But the issue is you'll now have to go out and hire an attorney. Yep. And pay them real lawyer dollars to protect you because 
the first thing that will happen is they will try to get you on the phone and depose you. And deposing you, you can think you're saying something inane and innocuous, and it can enhance your liability even though you went into that call with no liability. Mm -hmm. zero, not a, so the first thing you have, if you have insurance, they call you. I don't even say I'm sorry to hear about that because I don't want to provide any position that would make anybody be able to assume I had some liability because I was confessing sorrow. Sure. Yeah. Versus just the normal human thing. Oh, that's bad. Sorry. They got hurt. No, I just simply say, okay, well, let me have your contact information and I'm going to turn that over to our claims adjuster and they'll take it from here and they'll do all the things. Now the lawyers will try to strong arm you and they'll try to ask you a bunch of questions. The first thing that happens when somebody gets you on the phone, they need to identify themselves. Why they're calling. If they say they're calling about Sue Taylor that got injured at, at Rick and Larry's reception, you say, how am I involved? You know, why are you calling me? Mm -hmm. Because you were the photo booth at the party. Well, yes, I was the photo booth. I had no interactions with them of any kind. Uh, and you, you leave it at that or even stop there and go, well, please send me your uh, information about your claim and your contact info, and I will forward that over to our claims adjuster, and they'll take it from here. And the great part about having insurance, they take it from there. Oh, certainly. You, they will tell you, don't talk to anybody under any circumstance unless we're on the phone and you don't answer until I tell you in your ear, yeah, go ahead and answer. And we've worked out what your answers are going to be. That is a great, great value because something happens and somebody gets injured. Most claims start at forty or fifty thousand dollars and go up from there. Well, if you think about forty or fifty grand, that would be a second mortgage on your house if you've got much of it paid for. Exactly. If yeah. you have a day job and you're only a part-time boother, that means wage garnishment. That means they take money out of your check for a long time. A long time. So yeah. the best part of having that insurance is your life goes on. In fact, most people in the booth industry and the events industry get out when what I call they get a wife and a life when they're guys or men. You know, <laughs> they're ladies, it's when they get a husband and a life or a significant it's other a spouse in life. In life yeah. At yeah. some point they go, you need to make more money. That's kind of the first part we talked about. It, it needs to be real money a real business. And then secondly, you need to be protecting your assets because now as you have cars, homes, college funds that you may have started for your children, you want all of those things protected. And the way it's done is liability insurance. And here's another way you protect your, yourself. Don't do stupid crap. Well, Don't string cables across doorways. If you need to put a cable across the door, it goes across the threshold and it's taped down with gaff tape. In my particular case, I use mats like you'd find at Costco. Sure. Like outdoor mats that are like, you know, three foot wide, five feet long. And I put those over the threshold, over the wire, so there's a long transition so nobody trips. Mm -hmm. Why? I don't need anybody tripping. Next thing, if you're a photo booth and you're using tripod set up your lights in the fashion to understand if somebody can trip on it, they're going to. If somebody can knock it over and bean grandma on the head, that can happen and it will. Yeah, unfortunately. So you have tripod lights, weights on your stands. Uh, I'm a bigger fan of instead of a tripod, have a single monopole with a weighted base plate. Mm -hmm. And the great part about it, you don't have to have a really big or huge heavy base plate. Uh, little more space is best, but you can simply go to Home Depot or big box store and buy the kind of weights you put on a pop-up, like for outdoor parties. Yep, yep. Well, you can put a couple, three of those on there. You now got 40 pounds. That's not falling over without some serious, somebody running and hitting. Really hitting it. It's yeah. not going to fall over like bumping a tripod. Another thing, if you're devoted and married to tripods, put silk plants or stuff around it so you create a bigger obstruction so 
in the, the moderately dimly lit event, there isn't a tripod leg sticking out for somebody to trip on. Instead, they see other things around that naturally guide the human to say, oh, there's some, some decorations there. I'll just walk around it. And the good news is they're now at least a couple feet away from anything you have going on. Uh, so that's another tremendous value and, and, and advantage. Sure. The next thing you want to think about liability is use of children's photography. There is nothing a client can do which waives a parent's right to sue you for having pictures of their child on the internet or in your brochure. There's no, there's no photographic waiver that's all a bunch of baloney. Nobody can waive that. Now, you could make the argument that film companies put signs outside the door. If you come in here, you're agreeing to be filmed and all of that nonsense. And, like, what's the option? I don't get to go to Sally's wedding because do so means I have to agree to be photographed? No. Those things just really generally don't hold water. Yeah. Being seen in a large crowd shot at a wedding or a, a mitzvah or something, that's largely arguable. But again, you want to take focus on if you're putting children. You could have uh, children whose custodial parent has left an abusive relationship and they're in hiding, if you will. They're in the Child Protective Services Witness Protection Program. Yep, yep. Well, the last thing you want to do is put their picture on the, on the Internet. And here's why. Google has a tremendous ability for facial recognition and facial match, including what would this kid look like 10 years from now? Yeah. That used to be the stuff of NCIS and yeah, exactly. crime story yep. and all these other dramas. Now that technology exists in the open market space. So you don't want to be involved in any liability ways because guess what? If that kid got kidnapped and was injured and it was because of a photo you put online, you have a liability. And remember, ultimately, no client can sign away or waive anyone else's rights at that event to sue you for injury, damage, defamation, or any of the host of other, other things. So that's why you want to have liability because, again, it's inexpensive. It's cheaper than a cup of gas station coffee a week. Why would anybody really wanting to be in the booth industry not okay. have that? Yeah. Because that's just what keeps you operating safe and it keeps your business protected. So if something happens, you know, your life goes on. And so those are the things you want to have. The other thing you want to have is gear insurance. You want to have property insurance. Sure. You, especially if you have a very nice large booth, an enclosed booth, uh, where you've got 10, 15, 20,000 in it, you need it protected. You need some protection on it so that, you know, some errant teenager gets mad, pushes it over, and it's trashed, you're, you're protected. Yep. You want to be protected if you now have a roamer or one of these, you know, very simple portable booths that you set it down, go to the bathroom, you come back and someone's taken off with it. You want insurance for that. And property coverage, again, you don't have to look at insuring, um, like I wouldn't, I never insured props. To me, yeah. props were in that business plan we spoke of yep. as a consumable. It doesn't mean I want everybody to take every prop home, but I had a certain amount of what I call prop loss. Mm -hmm. That's for props that get stolen. You know, they get taken out of the dance floor and drunk Sally or, or drunk Bob forgets to bring it back. Mm-hmm. You know, and one of the great things with the new software products is is virtual props. Virtual props means I don't take any props. Yeah, and that's I'm sorry. Nice. If you really want those kind of props, maybe I'll hire that subcontractor from another boother, and it's their deal to pass out their props and collect their props. But ideally, my view is I want to not have stuff like that. But if I'm going to have it, when I did, I kept it as a line item, prop, prop loss, prop yeah. recovery. So... If every event I do, I've got so many dollars built into the cost the client pays, I don't worry if those props disappear. And I'm not going to insure them because 
you're not going to file a claim on your insurance for a five dollar hat, yeah, or even a fifty dollar uh, head mask thing. You're you're not going to do it. Yeah, certainly not. You you want your property coverage based on your largely on your capital items, your computers, your uh, cameras, your iPads, your booths themselves, anything that somebody could lift or that could be damaged by a guest knocking it over, uh, etc. Jack, do you know right at the top of your head what the uh, what kind of a rate uh, a person would expect to pay? Uh, per thousand or whatever, however it's figured yeah. out, just $7. to give a ballpark. Seven forty nine cents per thousand per year. Seven forty nine. Seven dollars and forty nine cents. So a person yeah. can then just really decide. Okay, I've got ten thousand worth, ten thousand dollars worth of gear. That would be ten times seven forty seven seventy four dollars and ninety cents. Uh, forty nine seventy four dollars and ninety cents. Yeah. So that'll give you guys an idea. Um, and and. The liability insurance and the uh, gear insurance is something that they can get through the photo booth association. Correct. As a member of the photo booth association, you save about sixty dollars on liability insurance. Property coverage, we've made a chosen decision to keep that suppressed. So uh, we rolled out some other fees so that we wouldn't there wouldn't be a discount on the property coverage. Okay. Because we wanted that to be as low as we could possibly get it. Uh, and just full disclosure. We do not get any compensation, any payment of any kind from anyone regarding insurance. And people that tell you that they do are lying because it's illegal. We don't do that. It's illegal. It's illegal. The carrier could not compensate the photo booth association unless we were a duly licensed insurance broker in all 50 states. Sure. And we have a broker, as, as everybody knows. That's RV Nucio. That's for the pro photographers insurance, which is the longest running insurance in the pro photography and photo booth industry. It's solid. Uh, Fireman's was recently acquired by the Aleons group, which makes it one of the two largest insurance products in the world. So just take us through for those, if somebody wants to, to join and they need to get insurance and they need to do this, what would the process be to go basically from nothing to being fully insured uh, with going through the membership? Awesome. Well, there's two options. We have what's called an insurance access only membership. That's for people that are a little unsure about joining PBA full at the full level. Well, and basically they pay $99 and they can then go buy the liability insurance for the $99 price. Uh, the value to them doing that is if they come back and say, I didn't know you had 150 hours of educational videos and a certification program. Wow, I, and discounts on all this other stuff. Oh, and did I mention we have healthcare, medical, dental, life, and vision, disability, prescription drugs, the whole thing available to our members? Yep, we do at, at a discount. So then they come back. Well, now because they've paid the $99, their upgrade to the full membership is only an additional $100. Okay. Because the full membership is $199. And that gets them access to use of our logo, gets them access to all of the products and services we offer, all the educational content. And then after they've got that, they're going to get assigned what's called a PBA member number. It'll be a seven to eight digit, nine digit number. They would then go to pro photographers insurance to the following the links on our website, photobootassociation.com slash insurance. Then they, it would ask, are you a member of either ADJA or the photo booth association? You'd say yes, and then it would ask for a number. You'd enter that number on that website. That website automatically connects to our online server network to validate that you, in fact, are a member and that your name and address and all of that matches what's on our records. Mm -hmm. And then you get the member price. Take you probably, from the time you hit the PBA website with intent, you'd probably be insured for a million dollars and have property coverage outside inside of 15 minutes 20 minutes wow. stops you know unless you're unless this is how you type if you type like this <laughs> it might take longer might take a little bit longer <laughs> but within 15 minutes you can be insured for a million dollars and be printing off uh what's called an additional insured certificate yeah yep. you have the certificate of insurance and that's what you want to show people that you're insured 
And then oftentimes venues and even clients will ask for what's called an additional insured certificate. That means we want to be named on your insurance. So you do something stupid. We're not getting sued. Yep. Now the venue knows they're going to get sued, but it, it's your fault. They can at least do what's called subrogate, which means they can send that claim down to you, to your insurance, because you've given them additional insured certificate for that date and time and window. Now, the reason this is important is clients are going to start asking for this more and more yep. because as we see a more and more litigious society, they don't want to have a surprise when they come home for their honeymoon. Oh, by the way, <laughs> after you left, <laughs> yep. Bob punched Dave out. Dave's in the hospital and he's suing everybody. Yeah. And you don't think that can happen, but it just does. It I just see does. Yep. the insurance claims that go in throughout this. I talk with the other uh, parties. One thing you want to think about when you get an insurance company is you want someone that's got a long standing history, a long standing history of, of great coverage, paying claims, uh, which we do, uh, because you'll find there's a lot of companies jumping into the insurance game, but unfortunately, they're not really being upfront. They'll tell you it's $30 a month. Right. Well, it sounds like a great deal. Except when you times it by twelve, that's you know that's what four hundred and some yep, yep dollars, right, right four hundred sixty bucks a year. That's not really a, a a great deal. So at that point, it's not a good deal. Mm -hmm. And for what most of these single day policies and monthly policies sell for, if you use it twice you can be insured for an entire year. And, Some yeah. single day policies are as much as 80 to a hundred dollars. Yep. Do the math. I mean, it's literally so expensive. Now here's another piece that protects you. Now we're talking about how we protect your business and your income. How many of you have ever had an event cancel? And they say, we'd really like our money back. <laughs> yes. Well, you've turned down events for that day. And you go, I don't really want to give you your money back. I've spent time and effort, mm -hmm. and we have a contract. Well, there's a couple avenues. One, you can go to court, and you can arbitrate your contract, and you can prevail almost all the time. Uh, there are some things we teach our members that you need to do to increase that prevail uh, percentage. But the best thing you can do, particularly a wedding, a bar, bar mitzvah, a large event where they're spending 10, 15, 20, 30,000, $50,000, encourage them to buy event insurance because for them as the client, them as the host, it does a couple of things. Sally finds out that Bob's a dirt bag, cancels the wedding. She cries, but now she's got invoices from the caterer, from yeah. the venue, all these people wanting to be paid because guess what, folks? Everybody else doesn't say, oh, I'm sorry about that. It's too, too bad, bad to yeah. hear we just don't worry about it. We'll refund everything. You don't have to pay us anything. Yeah. They're not going to do it because they've lost money. Yep. You don't want to either. But if you've been the one that's encouraged them to spend a couple hundred dollars to get event insurance, now Sally doesn't care. Sally just goes, hey, Mr. Adjuster, Bob was a dirt bag. We've canceled the wedding. Boom. Or, hey, how did I know Hurricane Dorian was going to come through and destroy things? Yep. Now you're covered. Or the venue catches fire and burns down a week before. Now, yeah, you could got to figure out where to do and what to do. And if you can move it to another place on the same day, great. But if you can't, you now have an ability to take care of all your financial responsibilities, which amounts to ten to 20000 or more dollars for a couple hundred bucks. Yep. It's just sound. And the best part, when you encourage them, you give them a sense of confidence in your professionalism because you're telling them about things they probably haven't heard about. And, you you know, again, you say, look, here's where I'm going to send you. It's going to be relatively inexpensive, but it protects you against, God forbid, anything tragic happening or anything happens that causes your event to need to be canceled. Now you execute your contract, you're paid. And the client's not aggrieved because they've gotten a way to not have to go, 
I spent a thousand and got nothing. Yeah. Rather, they they got their, all their money back that they spent up front, and all of the, the vendors got paid off. So the vendors are happy, the clients happy, and when Sally finds Tom, who is an angel and a saint in waiting, she can go. I still have my wedding money that they put together because again, most couples today, with weddings at least, it's self-financed versus the traditional thing of how it was perhaps in my day where mom and dad paid for that. Yeah. So these are great tips for how you protect your business. A couple other ways to protect your business. Don't do stupid crap. Don't steal other people's photo booth images and use them as your own. They can sue you yes. for a lot of money. And you, and a lot of boothers think, well, that's fine. I, you know, I live in an apartment and I have no money. They're going to sue me. Well, it gets worse than that. They can demand ownership of your domain. They can take your domain away from you. Mm -hmm. Most people, if you infringe and you get it off the minute you, you find out about it, they're pretty cool with it. But that doesn't mean you can knowingly infringe and wait to be found out. There's a reason that companies like iStock exist and Getty Images exist. It is better that you use stock images than steal from others. You, I'm a big proponent of stock images for one reason and one reason only. Rights. No, oh, certainly. I don't have, we talked earlier, I don't have to get Sally's permission, permission yep. that was in my booth to use her thing. And yeah, you can have your little card by the booth. If you get your picture taken, you're giving me permission to do X, Y, and Z. But the truth is, if she took you to court, she, she would win. win. Every time. Because the judge would say, you did everybody read this? Did they sign it? Did they initial it? Yeah. They're a party. They're imbibing. You, you're expecting me to believe they really knew what was going Yeah. Mm. Understood that you were, that their image was going to be on a billboard on interstate five. No. So there's a reason for that. And there's a reason why so many major companies use stock photography. It's not that they can't get great photography of their own. It's they don't want to. Now, any pictures that you use should be representative of the quality of work you're able to deliver. Don't put up super brilliant, perfect pictures when you aren't significantly experienced about it. Gets to the next point about protecting your business. The way you protect that business is you learn first, sell later. Hear that again? Learn first, sell later. That's why, oh, I'm starting a photo booth business. Great. First thing you should do is find a group of photo boothers that would embrace you and network with you and help you out, teach you a little bit. Most boothers are willing to help new boothers because they'd rather someone come in the business that's doing it correctly, that's yep. not pouring their, their service out for nothing because they don't know better. Uh, you know, and obviously... Image-wise, the technology is advancing at such a rate that getting a crappy image is getting harder and harder to do. Yeah. yeah. You know, you look at the new iPhone 11, and it's just a phone. And you look at a 12 meg, you know, three 12 megapixel cameras and all of the things and backlight and nightlight and all these other oh. things that the technology is advancing toward. It's not going to be long before a pretty reasonable quality photo exists. And, you know, bear in mind, this is the standard of photographic excellence for 90% of the people that will ever get in your booth. Yep, for sure. It's mostly now. now that's, this is you know, we can have arguments till the cows come home, but that's the reality. More pictures have been taken with these than with all the DLSR cameras in the last 20 years. Yeah, that's... That's just a fact. Why? Yeah. Because DLSR... Digital cameras came on and, and that, but as phones became such that the lenses and the camera elements became significant, well, you go to Disneyland. Do I want to take this with me or do I want to take a DLSR in a pocket? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going to get in the argument about the quality of pictures because you can do so much more with a DLSR. That's absolutely true in terms of composition and other elements, but in terms of a of a pick that you'd find in a booth. It's a fixed object. They're behind a backdrop. They're a fixed distance. Boom, click. 
the lighting is fixed. There's not a lot of magic mojo going on there. Yeah, for sure. So with that, there's no reason to have crap photography on your website. And there's no reason to take bad pictures. And the other side, if you're a member of PBA, we can mentor you and help you to develop your business. And hey, guess what? If you're starting a business, you're going to go to PBX. That's going to be number one on your list before you go out and book 100 people is go to PBX, network, go to sessions, learn what you don't know because it's a massive amount that you don't know. You know, one guy used to tell me a photo booth is just a portable ATM. Well, too many boothers think of it that way, and it's yeah. not. It's a business that can be a really big ATM if you know how to use it, run it, manage it, and make sure that you have contingencies. Here's another way you protect your business. Have backup equipment. If you have a booth, great. So you go to you go to the party. They paid you $1,400 to be at, the, at that bar mitzvah. Halfway through, your printer pukes. Can you fix it? How long is the photo booth down while you're putzing around trying to fix it? Yep. Versus you already have in the room, in another case, a replacement printer, and you go, I'm sorry, this will be five minutes. You bada bing, bada boom, new printer in and go. The same, I would say the same is true with iPads and all in onesie computers. Have a backup, have a plan, have a second camera. Yeah. And, and the only reason that these things become important, you don't necessarily have to have a an entire second booth, but you want to have the key integral elements because if something happens, you go five minutes, I've got the camera swapped out. Five minutes, I've got the onesie swapped out. Five minutes, I've got a printer swapped out and you're back in business. And it, it's so it's important to have those considerations to protect your business because again, they hire you for 14, 15 or bucks to do that mitzvah. What are you going to do if your solution is back home? Yeah. And you're basically done. Or I'll be back in two in an hour and a half thereabouts because it's 40 minutes to my house and then get it, pick it back. Be about 90 minutes. So 90 minutes out of a four-hour party is toast. And if it happens at, toward the end when they're really wanting, every, you know, the last of the pictures and everything, not good. Yeah. Here's another way you protect your business. Well, we'll get into these in future things. Otherwise, I'm going to do it all tonight. <laughs> That's for sure. And we need to wrap up here. We've been uh, we've been going quite quite along. Um, the link for the Photo Booth Association is in the description of the videos, so you guys can go down there and click on that. Uh, pop out to the website. Um, as as Drax said, you can go and join. You can do the insurance thing with that. Once you're join you joined, reach out to Drax with questions and such. Um, that's he's there as a resource for your business. Reach out with, with questions, no matter what. I'm here to help you build a great business. Obviously, I'm going to talk to you about joining PBA uh, as part of that, but I'm here to help you. I'm here to make your business more successful. That sounds great. Uh, uh, is there What's the best way for people to get in contact with you, Drax? Uh, well, it's at thephotoboothassociation.com. They can get us on Facebook uh, at the Photo Booth Association Facebook page or group, or they can Call me at 800-421-5761. That's the phone number for the Photo Booth Association. You know, you can ping me directly at uh, Hugo Drax on Facebook. No problem. That sounds great. You, know, you guys can, Pounds out there, website, wherever you're, whatever is convenient for you, and, and uh, connect. Whatever and, works. And build a better business as a good, we get into 2020. Exactly. I look forward to it. Drex, thanks for being on tonight and sharing some, some insight and such on how to protect our businesses and grow them in the upcoming years. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me, John. Thank you guys for See being with time. us tonight. Good night, everybody.